Okay, everybody, uh, we're going to get started here. And of course, this is the, uh, the, the the remainder of the four hour portion that we have for class here to have each each week. And I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack this week uh, and just take a few moments and visit with you about uh, the case follow ups. I was very, very happy with what I saw. Everybody did a good job. And um, I, I could see that for many of you, it was a beneficial exercise. And so I'm quite happy with, with, with your work. Now, I want to, to, to though, kind of direct us uh, in, in, in terms of kind of shifting gears. And we've been working with Excel. Okay, we've, we've done the, the salon, Tamika's Tang Salon, that one. We've also done Lake West. And so I, I think it's, and I know it's time for us to move on and talk about using databases. Now, in this course, we're going to use um, Microsoft Access. And let me open up the syllabus for just a minute. And you're going to see that uh, we have on the 29th, um, let me see here. On the 29th, we've got the, what are the case follow-ups, and then on the 29th, uh, the quizzes, and then on the 31st, the Lake West University. So we've done Lake West University, okay? And then you also have a, a, the case follow-up too, uh, and choose one of those from Perelson uh, four through six. So you've got those up, uh, those assignments. Now, where we're headed to, is we're working ahead, and I'm looking ahead now to September the 7th, and you'll see that we have three uh, um, database or access cases or Excel cases, lab cases, if you want to call them that, that are due. One is this one, that's any material left on the, the uh, tutorial or any other material that are covered, we'll upload that here. Uh, then we're going to conclude Lake West or any other material covered, and then we'll start on the Microsoft Access and Database. I'm, I, will, I will tell you the files that we're going to upload for each of these, okay, and they will be uh, database files. So we're going to start working on the databases and those will be the files that you'll be uploading for September 7th. And I will, of course, remind you of that uh, next week when we, have, uh, when we have another session. So today, I'm going to dispense with, with, with a typical kind of lecture. And I'm going to start with the very first file that I will want you to upload. And it will be uh, the one, uh, this, this one for this, uh, this any material left on the, the spreadsheet tutorial. Or, or other material covered. So this first one, and I'm going to come over to the files, okay? And we're going to go through here, and I want you to note that I've got some ex, uh, I've got some files here for you that are uh, access files. Now, folks, let me say this: if if you if you have a Windows machine, you should have Microsoft Access, that's the database that we'll be working with because it's a model for just about all of the databases that are out there, okay? And so we're going to start with the concept of a database warehouse, and I have a Microsoft Access database, and here it's the ACCDB, that's a Microsoft case, and we're going to talk about that. Now, that will be the very first, first one. And if you go over to the to the lab book, okay, and this is of course the green book uh, by Miller. If you go into part three, go to the table of contents, and you'll see part three. All right, and there's some, there are some database cases there, and there are a couple of them that we'll look at. And I know we probably will look at uh, second time around movies. It's over on page 138, and I know for sure that we will work with Elusive Moose. That's over on page 146, so we'll, we'll do some, some work with those cases. Now, I want to make sure, certain that you understand that, the, again, we're, we have three database files that we'll upload there. 
upload there, and that's going to be on the 7th of September. That's what we'll be uploading. So let's go back to the files now, okay? And you're going to see that I've got a, 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 a file here on um, the database warehouse. And before we go any further, I want to go ahead and, and start with the analytical cube and let's just download that and then we'll take a look at it because I want to get us started in the right way and talk about this notion. And again, um, I want to reinforce the fact that the a database is designed to, to let us do multidimensional or multivariate analyses. Now, that is, running queries that let us select sets uh, or perform unions of data and thereby query and pull out of the tables in a database what we're after. And so you can see here uh, this notion, we have these dimensions, we have time, okay, and that's broken into sub-dimensions by month. We have measures, okay, these are things that we count or measure. And then we have what we call, and then we have some more categories over here. These are product categories. The product categories and time, we would call them uh, dimensions or attributes, okay, or variables. And then, of course, down here are measures, all right? Now, I want to make sure that you, uh, you know, I'm going to close this off for a minute, that you do take a look. I have a, I have a, um, a resource over here on, on business intelligence. Here it is, and this is a nice PowerPoint. This PowerPoint is a nice overview of what we're talking about when we when we talk about business intelligence. And I would really encourage you to take a look at it because it helps us understand, okay, uh, how that all works. All right, and I would really recommend that you take a look at it. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. You can go through it faster and quicker than, than I could just walk you through it. But it does help set the stage for understanding that we build the analytical cube, okay? And we do that primarily using databases. And then from that, we perform queries and we perform data analysis that feeds into our dashboard, okay? And that dashboard has key performance indicators that help us know how we're how well we are are meeting our internal goals or how we're meeting uh internal standards and also they help and, and uh, dashboards are also are, are supposed to help us be able to monitor the external environment and by doing those things we feed into the company strategy and the company mission now i, I want to make sure that we we spend a little bit of time talking about uh, the, the notion of a data where, warehouse and we're going to see this and again uh, we're going to look at the we'll probably we'll probably look at second time around movies I know for sure that we're going to look at elusive moose that's case 20 over page 148. But, we, but before we do that, I, I want to, to walk you through uh, some examples of a database. And, and here's one, and I want to download it. Now, let me say this. If you don't have Microsoft Access, okay, go to uh, go somewhere and, and, and get it because that's what we'll be working with. Now, I know that there are things out there like OpenOffice. I know there are products out there like SAS has a product. Oracle has a product. Uh, uh, SAP has a product, and then there are proprietary kinds of database programs that are out there. I use Access for a very simple reason. It allows us to see everything that is involved with a database. In other words, it lets you take a look at behind the scenes and see what has to happen for that database to be a useful tool i.e. to be decision centric for you the decision maker okay and by doing that i'm able to make it a lot easier for you to communicate with the people in it uh, in terms of what you want what you need the way data are inputted and so forth 
And again, this is a survey course. It's an, and I treat it as such. And so I have probably have some of you who are very expert at working with databases. Uh, but you're going to see that access is really just a good model, okay, uh, to, to understand and, and learn how they work. And I have an example here for you, and uh, we'll download that thing again. Okay. Oh, that, that, that's from the, that's, this is from the group software project. My, my, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I got ahead of myself there. I wanted to look at that next week. Here it is, the data warehouse, and I apologize about that. Okay. And you'll want to download it to your, to your, uh, to your, to your computer. Now, all in access, as in any database, there are basically four types of objects, and I'm going to close this shutter. Well, I'm going to open the, I'm going to click on the shutter. I'm going to show you there are tables. That's where we store data. Queries, that's how we pull data from the tables that we're after. Forms, those are objects that we use to input data into a table more efficiently. Reports, that's pretty obvious. That's output. Okay, and so those are the four basic types of objects that we have in a database, okay? And you're gonna see these here uh, in this shutter bar, all right? And we'll see tables, then we're gonna see some queries, all right? And there, and, 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 we, and there's, there's some reports, there's a couple of reports down here as well that are actually run like queries. So let's see if we've got any reports, nope. They're just all, we just all have, we've done tables and queries on this, but we'll go ahead and click all access objects. Okay. Now, I want you to notice something on here. When you, when you look at the file and you put your cursor over here, you'll see it says dim channel. That means dimension or attribute. Okay. Uh, some kind of variable, if you will, that interests us, and in this case, it's a marketing channel, okay? In this case, then we have a dimension called customer, then we have a dimension called product, then we have a dimension called salesperson, then a dimension called sales type, then a dimension ca called time. So let's open up this dimension channel for just a moment and look at that table, and you'll see it lists three channels, these are the marketing channels for this organization via the internet, internet, mail, or phone. Okay. Uh, we have uh, another dimension table, and that's a customer. And this is a list of our customers. Okay. And 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 we and when we have a series of dimensions put together or sub dimensions like customer ID, customer customer name, city, state, zip, and salesperson. Anytime we have a collection of those, we have a record. And in this case, we have 10 records. Okay? Uh, so that's then how you start to see that cube emerge. Now, here's dimension product. And these are the products that we carry. Okay? And then we have those products div div uh, divided into categories. Okay? So we have product category and we have the product itself and we have an ID assigned to each product then we have the salesperson dimension these are the people who are our salespersons okay so we can keep track of who did what then we have the type of sale and we'll open that up and there are really there are two types one is an order okay somebody orders something the other is a return okay where someone bought something but then they return it to us Okay, now we also have the dimension time, and we'll open that up. And these are a list of transactions and the fiscal quarter in which they occurred. Okay, and you'll see that these are all for uh, all in the in the um, in the second quarter 
and they're all actually during the month of June, which is in the second quarter of that of that period of that year. Uh, that, and these are all, of course, fictitious. But second quarter of 2011 would be uh, well, the first quarter would be January, February, March. Second quarter would be April, May, June. So you could see. And, and in this case, what we're doing is we have this, the date the sale occurred and the quarter in which it occurred. Okay. Now, we want to take a look at these for a minute. So I'm going to close all of these. And let's go back to do the dimension channel and click on it and open it. And then you're going to see, you can go down and deep, and you can dive down and see how this table's put together. There's a couple of ways that you can do that if you're not used to navigating. You can either come up here to the far left. This is the design view. You'll see there's a data sheet view. There's a design view for a table. All right. Or you can right click over here on the tab. And we're going to look at the design view. Okay. The design view for a table tells us what fields, i.e. columns, are we working with and what type of data are in there. And we have to be concerned about the type of data for two re for really three reasons. First of all, simply for storage, you know, if you, if you, if you get, if you have 50 million records, you have to become quite concerned about the space that it occupies and what it takes to push that data through the system. Now, you know, 50,000 or 100,000, that's one thing, but when you get into the millions, it starts to become some real money. But you'll want to know that anyway, because these are key variables that you're interested in. And obviously you want to know the channel, the marketing channel. So the, the one, the first field, and that's a text data type. Then we have the channel itself. So each channel has an ID. Now you'll notice something on here and you come down to the bottom and you're going to see a thing called field properties. Okay. And if you look at, you're going to see the size of the field. All right. And you have some things like a format and an input mask. We'll talk about some of those. Any captions, that's what we could want to rename that field uh, to, to mask it. In any default values, validation rules, validation text, and then whether or not it's required. Okay. Now, if we required a channel ID, right? If we didn't put one in there, then it's pretty simple. We would the the record anytime we enter a record, i.e., a new a new uh, a new uh, channel, the record wouldn't save. But they've chosen because this is a very slowly changing dimension. Probably you know, your marketing channel versus the the uh, is just not going to change very much. Okay. Now, and then we look at channel, it's also text. And notice there's something here that's a little bit strange. The channel ID is not required. The channel is not required. And I'd have to say that for me, if it's not required, why would you have it there? But you could choose this and make it yes. But the but but the, because this is such a slowly changing channel, it's marketing channels. It's not going to change very much. Uh, you know, you could skip doing that. Now let's look up at the let's look at the at the data view, data sheet view, and you can do it either like this it's by clicking on the tab, or you can click up here to the far left. All right. And you'll see that we have this dimension channel. Now we're going to click on the, and we'll close that off. And we're going to look at the dimension customer and we're going to open it up in the design view. And here we'll see the customer ID. Okay. And the customer name, the customer city, state sales and zip. And in this case, we're not requiring the 
the customers to have, uh, we're not requiring um, that we have a customer ID. Okay, and I can just tell you, out in the real world, this won't fly, but, uh, you know, in this case, we're dealing with such a small number, but in the real world, every customer ID would have to be unique. Just like you have an OBU ID that's unique, just like you have a social security number that's unique, um, same story there, so that we know who our customers are, okay? But we've just chosen to number them, and then we have their name, and their city, their state, their zip, and their salesperson. Now let's, Look up here for just a moment, and we'll see how these are all put together, okay? And again, this is a dimension, and we'll close this off. Then we have the, the product dimension, and let's open this up. You'll see here's the product, and then we have the product category, and these are the product IDs. And then a product description is really what this should be called a product description. Then we have product category, but that's okay. All right, and we're not dealing with anything so complex that we have to be uh, that concerned about it. But again, let's look at the demand, the product dimension, and go into the design view. And here we have the product ID, and it's not required. The product name, and actually this. We have product category and product ID, and, and let's change the name of this, and so we'll call it pro, uh, product description. And I'm just gonna call that product descript, so I know I'll, I'll call it description. And so, and then I'll just simply save it, and I'll go back up here, and there is the product description, and we move this out just a smudge in. Now, this is gonna create a problem for us when we run some of these queries because it's gonna be looking for a product description. So let's go back in here now to the design view, all right? And let's just leave it product. And then we'll go back and say, do you wanna save it? Yeah, we'll save the table. Okay, so we can edit these things, and then if I wanted to, I can add a 13th product, and that's just a matter of inputting the data. Now, we don't have any forms in here, um, and, and that's unfortunate, but we're gonna create a form, okay, that allows us uh, to input data. And, We'll do it with the, with a fact table. Now, here we have the sales type, I mean, the sales person, the sales type, et cetera. Okay, so, it's, uh, so I don't wanna beat it to death, but we have these, these products, these, 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 these dimensions. Then we have what we call production tables, and I wanna show you those. They start with the PROD production table. Let's look at the design view of that. And notice here that in this production table, the category has an ID and it has and it's a primary key. A primary key means a some indicator, a number, typically a number, okay, that designates each record and makes each record be unique. Okay. So as you so as you, as you notice that we have the, the dimension uh, uh, category up there, okay? That table, okay? Uh, here we have, the, we have the dimension, and here we have the product, pardon me, the, the, the dimension product, and here we have the product categories table, and we'll look at that. And so each category of product has its own unique ID. And again, it's required, they don't require the category ID, uh, but there are no duplicates, it's indexed. And we'll talk a little bit about index a little bit later. Okay, so that, again, you know, we're, um, 
moving along, seeing, looking at these, what we call production uh, uh, tables. Here's another production table for channels. And again, we're using an ID, okay? Uh, and we assign a primary key to it. Now we call them production tables because we're going to use them, okay, to generate queries, all right? That's why we have, you keep seeing this pattern, and here's the pr product order detail. We'll look at the design view, and here is the order detail ID. So, and, and we'll look at that, and here's the, the ID and the summary it was drawn from, and the product ID, and the qu or quantity ordered, and the price, and the cost. These are tables that help us produce report, help us produce queries. That's why we call them production tables. Now, I'm, I'm look at that. We have one for order summary. You'll notice we'll have, and and I want you to take a look for a moment and talk about this one. This notice first of all, it has a primary key. Okay, it's called the order summary ID, and that's the primary key. So each order summary has a unique designator. Now this says uh, it's it's a long integer. It's auto, and its uh, decimal places are automatic, and it's a number, and it's a primary key. Now I want you to notice something on these descriptions. Here we have the customer ID, which is a number. And this is a foreign key to the production customer's table. A foreign key is a primary key or a field that I insert into another field so I can link the two tables together, okay? I'm gonna stop for just a moment here and show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna close this off. Let's come up to the top of the database all right, and click on database tools. And let's look at relationships. Okay. And let's and let's look see if we have any relationships between these tables. Does they've done any relating to them? Okay. But I can do this if I want to by taking the by, by taking the tables and combining them. And we're gonna see this, all right, as we as we move along. And I'm gonna click all relationships and see if there are any, there aren't any. We didn't tie these up yet. I haven't done any work with them. Okay, now we're gonna come down to, and we have these other, the, the production table for products. But let's look at, at, at the focal point of the dimension channels, okay? And the, and the dimension cha uh, channels, the dimension tables and the production tables. And that's a thing that we hear called fact sales. And I'm gonna open this up. The fact sales table, all right, is a, think of it like a general journal, okay, in accounting. It's, it's, it shows us all of practically everything we want to know about the transactions, the date they occurred, the customer ID, the, the channel, the salesperson, the product ID, the sales type, the line price, the line cost, uh, and the, the order number. And this just gives us facts of all of these transactions. Okay, and this fact table uh, is 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 just simply if you if you see it's built chronologically, all right, and we can build that table either by inputting the data into the table or we can create a form to build the fact table. Okay, you see, you kept talking about forms. What do you mean? Well, let's do this. I'm going to close this for a minute. Okay. And we'll close the relationships. And let's come over here and click create. Okay. And let's 
click on um, the form wizard, and I'm going to take the table, facts, cells, and I'm going to throw everything over in the selected fields. I'm going to click next. And I have some options. It can be in columnar format, a tabular, a data sheet, or a justified. I'm going to stick with columnar, and I'll click next. And we're going to call this form fact sales, and we'll open it up. Now, a form is designed, okay, to make it easy to input data. And remember, we have this fact table that's nothing except the facts, the list of the transactions, the customers, all that. And you can see this form. Anytime you go buy something uh, online, anytime you do a search online, uh, anytime you, you register for an account or you input data, you're, you're usually putting it into a form that feeds into a fact table. Now let's look at this form for a moment. If you can see, we've got the sales date, the customer ID, the channel ID. If I want, I can do a search here, okay? I can navigate from, and I can create a new, I can create a new record, okay? I can uh, go to the next record, I can go to the first record, I can go to the last. It's just an easier way to input data, okay, uh, and, and to allow us to, uh, to, to build a facts table, okay? That's, that's really all a form is designed to do. Now, I'm gonna close this form. I'm gonna save it, okay? And then I'm gonna close it off. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna find, and I should find a form under forms. If it comes all the way down here, you'll see the little shutter bar. Here it says fact sales. Now I'm going to be old school, okay? And I'm going to rename this FRM FACT sales. So I know this is the form I use to create the sale, the fact sales table, okay? All right, so we've, we've, we've created a form, okay? Wasn't that big of a deal. And one of the things you're, you'll need to kind of keep in mind is as we're in here working with access, okay? We are essentially working at what, what I would call the, 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 the database administrator level. That is, we can do anything we want here. We can create a table, we can delete it. We can add records, delete records. We can link tables and unlink them. We can run queries, etc. We have, and, and this is basically a way to give you the back office view and to understand how these are all put together and how they come together, okay? It's essential for you to do that so you can be able to, to more effectively communicate with the people in IT. Now the amazing thing about what's happening is we are, we are collecting and putting data into databases, data we've never worked with before. That's this idea of big data, okay? Uh, and the two things, the really two things delineate it, uh, it's volume, there's tons of data out there that you know, we, businesses don't know what to do with it, and then the, the other is just simply the, the velocity at which it's created. And the other is the, it, really three or four. I forget the fourth and the third is just simply volume. Okay. So, uh, you, and when you take a look at and you hear people talk about big data, think for a moment about how many cars in the United States, all right, have Sirius XM. And... What are people listening to? When are they listening to it? You can, you, you, can, you can see what I'm talking about, okay? But collecting that data, you know, it takes some data crunching and some what we call data wrangling. 
so we can get it into tables in, in a way that we're used to seeing it. But we've created a form here for our fact sales table. Now we come to a point where we say, okay, I have the fact sales table, I have these production tables, I have these dimension tables, what do I do with it? Well, that's where we come to the query. Query is nothing more than a question, okay? And it's, I just, I wanna see something, I wanna know what we're talking about. Now we call this a data warehouse for a very simple reason. Okay, we have two sets of tables, dimension tables, and production tables. We have a fact sales table, a listing, okay? And this is just like a warehouse. I, I have a, in, in, in a warehouse, I'm gonna have a, a master list of the products that I have, okay? The kinds of things I carry, then I'm going to have uh, lists of, of, of inventory that's out there, okay? And you know, think of these dimension tables like a manifest, if you will. And then I have a, a fact table that says, here's, well, here's everything that's, that's been sold. So now I'm ready to do some queries and literally just, you know, pick and choose out of the tables and out of the fact table what I'm after. I am, I'm giving an example. Now, 90% now, now, of all queries, 95% of them, are what we would call select queries. And, and we're telling the machine, go to this table and this table and this table and pull these, pull data from these fields. Okay? And Essentially, we're just doing building sets, okay, of data. And then we can also append orders. We can run a query that appends to a table. Here we uh, can append data to uh, a returns, uh, returns. And, we're, and then we can also create channels, orders, and cells. We can run queries to create those things. Okay, and we can also do cross tabulation. All right. Now, here's a data warehouse sales, and I want to open it up for a minute, and you'll see what we mean by the data warehouse concept. Here we have the date of the sale, the fiscal quarters. These are the sales type. You can see these each 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 record. Okay. Each record is is um, each record is is really a combination of fields from a whole set of, of different types of tables. Okay, and we have them. They're grouped basically uh, basically grouped in dates. Okay, but what this is. This is just what we've got in terms of the warehouse. And just think of it like that. So we have the data warehouse of sales, and from it, we can start to call what we're after. Now, I'm going to close this. Uh, I'm going to go, pardon me, I'm going to close it. I'm going to go down to the design view, and we'll take a look at it. And you'll see something very interesting. Okay. This is what we call the design or graphic user inter graphic user interface. And I'm going to play around and you can use your cursor. And say, what in the world is all of this? Well, this shows us how these tables are all connected. I'll move this guy down here, this gal over here, and we'll give ourselves a little more visual acuity coming down here. So what in the world is going on? Well, we've linked these tables. Okay. Now, 
we've created a data warehouse by saying, okay, here are different, here's, here's all the stuff piled around, it's on stacks in, in, our, in our warehouse, it's on pallets, you know, whatever. Here it's stored in tables and we can go through order picking. And, and that's really what we, is happening when you run a query. But you can see the fact sales table, everything that feeds into it, okay? And notice that we have all these things that match. For example, the sales date matching the sales date. We match up that with channel ID with a channel. Now here's a primary key, and here channel ID is used as a foreign key. Okay, uh, here's the sales per. Here's the sales uh, product ID. In this case, product ID is the primary key, and it's linked into product ID. And as we link these, we're able to get this uh, a sale a data warehouse pulled. The, we have this data warehouse here that we can go then do our order picking. Okay, and so what are you talking about? Well. Um, we have uh, all of these different, uh, all of these different uh, data, and let's go back up to the data worksheet view. You can either do it by clicking on the tab and going to data sheet view, or up here on the top of the toolbar, doesn't matter. And I know that I've got some sales that have occurred on the 11th of, pardon me, on the 7th of June. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go down to the design view and for the criteria for sales date, I'm gonna put 6-7-2-0-11 and let's see what happens. And here, as I said, we've done some order picking. We said, okay, go through the warehouse and just get everything that, that, that was sold on the 7th. And I did that by establishing a criteria. Okay, and we'll go back down here to the design view, and that criterion was that date. All right, now I'm going to go back up and look at this, and we have these sales types orders, okay, and, and, and we don't have any returns on here, but we, ha we do have different channels. So I'm going to go back down here, and I'm going to look for the channel, and I'm going to put internet. And let's see what we get. I may have needed to have put like internet. Because I think we had more than one internet, maybe not. Back up and take a look. No, we had one internet, I was right. And then we could do the phone, okay? So you can see what I'm talking about. This notion of this data warehouse, or if I'm interested in the date, they were, they were the date, and the channel, the zip code of the customer, I can pull that data out, and the state. If I'm interested in, oh goodness, let's see what states we had some sales in. We, we had some sales in Arizona. So let's go in here and we'll go back down to the design view, and in the state for the criterion, I'm gonna, I, let's say this, I wanna find everything I sold um, for the month, Okay, uh, in Arizona, all sales that occurred in the state of Arizona, and I'm going to take a look up here, and there we are. I want to tell you something about databases. Databases that is exceptionally remarkable. When databases were first put together, the way that we we stored a table in a computer. And then when we developed a query, we had to go to a physical address and pull the data. So we were, we were actually recreating bits and pieces of tables and storing them. Well, you know, after a while that gets expensive, it gets clunky and costs a lot of money and time. But with the advent of object programming, we were able to create a query that will basically go in and pull and give us what we call a data set or a data 
view. What gets saved is the code used to execute the query. So we don't change the table. We don't recreate a bit or a piece of it. We just simply open it up and we get what and, and we and we take a picture, if you will, and we edit the picture using a query criteria to get what we're after. Okay? Then then we're storing far less uh, stuff than we have to. We're just storing code and we're not doing anything with tables. So that's why this is such a, a remarkable tool for us because it lets us look at this, we could take this analysis and go and, and do it and, and, and cut through all of these different levels. And here I have everything, um, uh, that, that all the sales that occurred in, in June in Arizona, okay? I can even whittle that down, we'll go back down to the design view, and I'm gonna choose everything that occurred in, in Arizona, and I'm gonna look at the channel type, and I, I can't remember what the, channel, what the channels are, uh, phone, mail, and internet. And I'm going to put everything in. We sold it by phone. And there they are. Okay. If I take that criteria and back off, boom. Here are, here are all of the sales, okay, uh, in, um, in, in, uh, in, in, in Arizona. Now, on the criteria here on the sales date, I'm going to put uh, less than 6, 15, 2017. Let's see if, if I violated something, probably have. Yep, I'm good. And there I have. Well, because we say, because we save these, and it, the computer displays these like a date. But it, it, but but at the computer level, at its level, it hand it handles these as numbers. So I'm able to do that boolean operation, or I'm able to say anything before six fifteen. Now I can change that by doing this. I can say anything after six fifteen two zero one seven. I said we had any sales after that, and we didn't. It's an empty set. And go back and look here. Yeah. Of course, you know, I could say, well, did we, did we have any sales during the 13th? All right. And so we can build those criteria as we go along. Now, we're going to go one, one little step further. And so we've got all of our Arizona, everybody that bought something from Arizona and, and what they bought. And again, if I said, okay, I'm just interested in product categories, I could say, well, okay, during June in Arizona, what was what, what product categories did I did I uh, did I you know did I uh, did, did I sell? All right, and not a big deal there. But let's go down to the to a little deeper, and this is let's open the hood and look at the SQL. Oh, my gracious goodness. What in the world is going on? Well, let's look at this for a minute. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it up here in a, in a notepad where we can see things a little bit better. And notice what's going on. Select. Have tell the machine, select. And on the left side is the table. And this is the dimension timetable. On the right side is the field in that table. So we're going to select from the dimension timetable the sales date. Also from that table, we want to get the fiscal quarter. And then we want to also get from a, the dimension sales type, the sales type. And then from the dimension channel, we want to get the channel. From the dimension customer table, we want to get the customer's name. From that uh, same table, we want to get their city. From that same table, we want their state. From that same table, we want their zip. Then we want the, and then we want their salesperson. And we're going to use a thing called an alias. 
and that's what we're calling it as customer salesperson. Okay, uh, dimension salesperson, and then we're going to dimension salesperson dot salesperson as order salesperson. And you can see we're just simply selecting from these fields from these tables. Then we say from, and here we have what we call an inner join. An inner join is where we take two tables and we match them up on some field and they have to match exactly. An inner join is pretty much the same thing in, as an intersection, okay? Now there are also what we call left, uh, left uh, joins and right joins. The left join would be the table, if let's say you have table A and B, okay? Table A we would call the parent table, parent, uh, table B we would call the child table. And if we want to do an inner join, we'll get everything that each of those tables have, okay? Where they, where they match. Or we could run a left join where I get everything in table A and, and, only, and only those things that, that where A and B match up. Or conversely, a right join where I get everything in table B and only also only those things where A and B match up. Or I could do a union where I take and put them together and, and, and any duplicates would be, would be eliminated. And we also have what we call a union all, and that's where uh, we, we take the whole kit and caboodle. Okay. And you'll see some of that. But here we've done an inner join. And notice uh, we've got all this stuff and these inner joins on all these different tables. And then we have this where clause, the dimension is our Arizona. And then we end it with a semicolon. SQL is not that hard to learn. It's basically a demand language. It's a specialized demand language. It's, and it, it just, you're simply telling the machine, here's what I want you to get. Okay, that's all. So we have all the sales in June from Arizona. And you can see I, if I'm interested, okay, well, you know, what, uh, you know, what was, you know, who, who was the salesperson that you know, sold the most, et cetera. We've got that data. So we're going to close this off and we're not going to save any changes to it. But I wanted to see that dimension table. Okay. Now, here is a cross tab table. And this is where we start to really make use of the analytical cube. And I'm going to click open up. This is the dimension uh, customer cross tab. Okay. And this is the product category by the total number of products sold per product. And we'll see this when we go down to the design view. Okay. And if you note up here, it said, you see the cross tab that's got that's hot up here in the toolbar is uh, just as in Excel, you get these breadcrumbs or these indicators that say, okay, here's what's going on. We're we're running a cross tabulation table, okay, and we're pulling this from the dimension product, okay, and we're going to group it by. The row heading, we're going to get the product category, so that will be the row. We're going to get the product ID, and that will be the column. See how we built the rows, and we built the columns, and then we're going to get the, we're going to get the counts with them. You say, this sounds suspiciously like the, uh, sounds suspiciously like a uh, pivot table in Excel. Yes. Okay. So a cross tab, and I would say this. Cross tab in, in most databases, you, you, you can, you'll run them and you won't even know you're doing it. You're just taking sets of variables and relating them, okay? Uh, but but a, it's really nothing more than a cross tab where we take two dimensions, okay? And then we, and typically we do counts. So we looked here at the product category, the product ID, the product, and the total of the product, that is the counts, okay? 
and how many of them were sold. And we'll go back up here to the results set was it. Okay. Now here's another, and we one of the things we do in the naming conventions here, we let people know, hey, this is a cross tab. We also have, we can also use uh, queries to append, that is to add to things. And we're going to go into the design view and look at this for just a minute. Let's scroll down here. And we're working with two tables. The product order summary and the product order detail. And as you can tell, we're appending data from one table to another. Okay. And we have a beginning date and an ending date, and we'll and we'll append data. Notice that these are taught that these two tables are linked by the order summary ID. Here's the parent table, here's the child. You see that line right there, put your cursor there and then click on join properties, and you'll see the left table, also known as the parent, and then the uh, in the column, and the right table, also known as the child and in the right column name. And this is an inner join where we only include the rows where the join fields from both tables are equal, okay? And each order summary ID, if it's unique, which it should be, will do that for us. We're okay there. All right, and you can see we're appending up here and we're going to do that. We're going to pin to the sales date, order date, and the product summary. Now let's click run, and it'll say, and it'll give us a beginning date. That's a parameter value. And then if uh, let's do a beginning date. Let's do six one two zero oh, one seven. Okay, and it'll ask for an ending date, and let's call that six uh, thirteen two zero oh, one seven. Click OK, and it'll say you're about to append some rows. We've already appended some of these rows, okay? So we don't have to worry about that, Bizwax, because we've already run the append, okay? And if we want to see that, we can look at the data sheet view. And we'll close this off here. This append, we don't want to make any changes to it, but this append, if we open it, could give us, should, it ought to give us uh, uh, about, ought to give us a picture of these. Append uh, tables are, append queries are fine, all right? And this is also with append the returns. Again, we're beginning a date. Here's a create query, we'll look at design. And this is what we, have as we're going to create the tape we're going to create a table basically create a channel table now let's go down to the sql and take a look at it and you'll see select our channels dot channel id product channel dot channel into so we're selecting data from one table and putting it into another we're creating a table uh, those are these Appends, append queries and create queries are not the bread and butter, okay, of what you'll be doing as a decision maker. Those are really more database maintenance and, uh, what, and what we would call data management. The data administration part is where you're calling out the data that you want, okay? And Let's do something here for just a moment. I'm going to look at the, the product channels, and I and I'm, I'm going to take I'm going to make a couple of notes here because I want to build try to run a, a, a little query here for us. So I'm going to get uh, uh, the uh, channel ID. 
and I'm going to get I, and uh, then I'm open up the customers, and I'm going to get, uh, let's see, I'm going to get the state, and I'm going to look for everybody in Illinois, and I'm going to look for salesperson. three okay and so I'm gonna write query I'm gonna close this off for just a minute and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm working with channels uh, customer yeah I'll close that off so I'm gonna click create and I'm going to go query design. I'm going to add the dimension, the, the uh, dimension channel table. And I'm going to add the dimension customer table. I'll close that off. Okay. Now I may have some problems here because these are not, uh, are not linked up. I'm going to take a shot at it and probably I'm not probably going to get a result set because I don't have them tied in. So I've got dimension and customer. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to try, I'm going to take a stab at this. So I'm going to pull the channel ID and the criterion will be internet and I'm going to, from the I'm gonna pull the, the customer, uh, the, the customer state, and that would be I, I L, and then I'm gonna pull the salesperson, and that criterion would be three. I don't know if we'll get a result set because we don't have these tied together. Oh, we got an empty set. Let's go and take a look at these and see if we can find. Uh, what we've got somebody that's from Illinois salesperson three and in the internet. So we're going to start with the channel ID. Okay. And I'm looking at the dimension table. Let's go back up here and let's take a look at this table. We have the internet. Okay. I probably let's do, let's, let's close this. I'm going to create this. Let's let's pull the uh, let's pull the production um, production tables into this instead of the and I'm going to get the production table for channels and I'm going to get the production table for customers and the production table. And, and we'll close that. Let's see what we get here. And we might get an empty set. So we're going to get the channel ID. And we'll pull the channel ID is internet. And we're just messing around with this. Okay. And then we're going to pull the uh, from the uh, customer's pr production table, customer will get the state, and we'll look for Illinois, and then the salesperson ID, we'll look for three, and let's see if we get a, a result set. Probably won't. Didn't think so. Now let's check this for just a minute, and let's open up the uh, table, and we'll close this query off, and we'll see if indeed we had an empty set there. So we're going to open up the uh, production channel table. And do we have any internet? Uh, yeah, we got internet. Okay. Uh, then we're going to look at the production customers table. And do we have uh, Illinois? Yeah, we've got Illinois represented. But do we have any sales to did salesperson number three have any sales to Illinois? No, they did not. So our empty set was cool. We were good to go.
okay? Even though we had not tied those together, where we were really gonna get our help is when we is when we did the joints. Now you can tie you can tie tables together up in the relationships using that using that tool, okay? And we'll see that a little bit later on. Okay, so right now we've got our warehouse. We've got a uh, you know we've got a, we we've got a production table that we've got. We have a fact sales table, and this is the one really where we can we we can really do some nice queries. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click query design, okay, and I'm gonna get the fact sales table and I'm gonna add it. Okay, and I'm going to get the sales date and the criterion will be uh, 6, 7, 2, oh, I remember this is two, 2013 or 2011, we'll go back down there, 2011 I think is one there. They're messing with it. I think it's six, seven, two, zero, oh, eleven. Now let's see if we had sales on the eleventh of uh, June that that year. Okay. Oh, we need a destination field. All right, let's sort these. Uh, All right. Open this jewel up. Okay, and I want to pull everything from there on the seventh of. Uh... Okay. So I want to write a query. Again, this can be a little bit daunting. I'm gonna do the fact sales. And I'm just gonna start with the fact sales and just, and that gives me all of those dates. Now, uh, I'm gonna put a criteria in here. Now, let's see what I get. I'm putting the criteria six, seven, It's giving me, uh, oh, I put eight, seven. Let's put six, seven. That'll give me everything, yep, okay. Now, we can just start to build this. We've got the sales date, and uh, for six, seven, and we're gonna get then the customer ID, the channel ID, the salesperson ID, and the product ID, okay. And we're going to get the line price and the line cost. And then we're going to create a, an operation. And this is going to be uh, net cost. And this will be, put a bracket, line cost, and it has to spell exactly like, pardon me, line price, in a bracket, minus bracket, line cost. And we're going to put these in bracket because we're, we're going to perform an, I, an, an operation here, and we're going to copy this. All right. And we're going to call it net cost. And notice I did the work on the pad, then I pop it in here. Let's see what we get. Ah, I've got a parameter problem. Oh, so I misspelled. All right, so I'm going to go back here. As I'd said before, uh, you have to make sure that you spell it correctly. Line price and line cost are run together. 
So I got to do that. I got to run them together. Then I shouldn't have any problems. Just, just said I'm not recognizing what you're asking me to do an operation on. And there it is. Okay. So we have all the sales from the 7th of, of uh, June. We have the customer ID. Uh, we have the, the channel, uh, the, the, the salesperson ID, the product ID, the line price, the line cost, and then the net cost. Okay, or you could call that net profit. Well, let's let's just go back in, and we'll go back in the query and go into the design view. And instead of net cost, now we can just do this. It's just easier a lot of times just to go here and delete it all, and then go back to your notepad, and we'll call this net profit. Now I'm ready. And I'll put it in here. It's called this is called an expression. And we'll run it. And there's our net profit. Now let's go down to the design view. And then we'll go down to the SQL view. And there's the select statement from what the table and then the conditional statement where fact sales date equals 6 7 2011 now i'm going to go back up here for a moment and we're going to go back down to the design view all right and i i don't like this business with the ids so instead of the cut I'm, I'm going to use the customer id well that's all i've got to work with there on the fact sales Because I've got IDs in here instead of descriptions. But that's okay. So you can see this is just a, a nice kind of a, a little short trip through a data warehouse. We kind of see the see how it all pulls together. And we won't save that, don't need we don't need to. But this uh this this database has the main components, tables, queries. It has a form that we would create, and it also has a report. You can use a query to generate a report. I will open that up. And they're asking us to begin with a value and so forth. Let's look at the design view on this jewel. Yeah. They want us to, if we we're gonna run the report, we've gotta find a query and wants us to, to run that for a given date. Now, let's do that and let's go back up here on the sales dates. Let's go to that data warehouse sales table and open it up. And we have dates between and just for, for grins, let's put that from the uh, newest to the oldest. I just want to see. And so let's get everything between um, six, six, 2011. Okay. And, uh, and the ending date would be six fifteen. Okay, let's close that back off. And we're going to run the query. It's gonna, it's a parameter, and it's gonna ask, give us a beginning date, and we're gonna put in 6, 6, 2011. Okay, and it's gonna ask an ending date, and the ending date will be 6, 15, 2011. You said, this looks suspiciously like when I filled out forms or I've made purchases coming out of uh, an e-commerce and I have to put in a credit card number and 
or, or, or I'm, or I'm, or I'm searching for stuff, uh, in the library, whatever. Yep. Pretty much. And there we go. Everything in terms of, uh, everything that was sold. Okay. In that time period. And we'll go back down. And we'll go to the SQL view. And we're going to go to the, to the uh, design view. Okay. And notice something. This box was suppressed. So I'm going to click here. Okay. So it will show up. And I'm going to click run. Oh, that's right. We're going to have to mess with this. So we have to leave that out of there because it's got that total. And we've got the beginning date. That's right, because we had the total in there. It's that sum. It's going to make us put in those. It's got those parameters. So we're going to put in. Well, this time we put in 6, 6, 11. Oh, well, we put 6. Let's put. Yeah, we could try. Well, let's do our set. Let's do this again. 6. 6, 211. That's our beginning date. And our ending date will be 615. Okay. Now for uh for what we would what we could do with this query, okay, would be to rename it. Okay. And basically we would call it sales between uh, six sales, six, 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 six to 11 to 615, or we could convert it to a report. Okay. Well, this is a, re a product analysis report. And we don't want to, we don't want to change that there. So we're going to, we're going to close this and we won't save the changes. Okay. But now if I want to, I could make a copy of that and then generate reports with it. This gives us a report, but it's not truly like a report. So just to see, see this done, let's go up here and click on create and then come over to the report wizard. Okay. And we're going to get the query report product analysis. We're going to throw in the kitchen sink. And that'll generate a report. And it'll give us a beginning day. And here we'll put in our six or six, two, oh, one, five notice. Okay, two, uh, 2011. Ah, pardon me. And then an ending day, and we'll put this in 6, 15, 2011. And there's our nice pretty report. Now, what we would do is we would go ahead and we go and we click on the design view. We could click on the layout view, and here we'll call it um, sales for the period, we'll call this uh, sales for the period 6, 6, 2011 through 6, 15, 2000, 2011. Okay, and now we'll click this to uh, to save it. And if we want, we can always come back and in this report and rename it. And, and we're gonna and we're gonna close this off. And what we'll we'll see a report pop up down here at the bottom. And if you we see the forms, and now you see the, the report category. And here's where we rename it. Uh, sales six 
uh, sales uh, six six two oh eleven to six fifteen two oh eleven and it may not want to play nice because I've got those uh, dividers in, those dividers in there oh it did and then we have our our nice report I'll open it up it'll say okay give me the uh, parameter value and I know what their parameter are because I know the start and end dates And there's my report. Isn't that pretty? One of the nice things I can also do is I can go ahead and I can go into the design view on this. And I could, and before, even before I did it, I could do that. I could get the total sales. I could get the net. I could do some other work with this before I did the report. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. And uh, say I'm gonna save the database as objects have to be closed. Oh, but, but I didn't want to say okay. I didn't want to save the objects. There it is. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna save it as a data warehouse on my desktop. And that data warehouse file, either the one you've been working with or you can download a fresh one, is what you're going to put into this first upload that's due on September 7th. Okay? So that will pretty much take us uh, through and... Um, I'll take a look at this and see, and uh, then uh, we, we've kind of covered this, and we'll we'll probably start with either elusive moose or um, uh, second time around movies for our next time, and I'll see how much time I spend. I don't know if I spend an hour and a half, two hours, but otherwise, you have again. Come up over here to the files, and you have that um, data warehouse file, and you want to download it to your machine, okay? Or if you've already saved the stuff that we've messed around with, go ahead, and then for that very first assignment that's due on September 7th, Upload it there. Okay, because we've already done Lake West. That was the Excel file, and you should have uploaded it there. Lake West goes here. This would be that data warehouse. Okay. Well, folks, I think that's pretty much it for us. And I'm going to pause the sharing, and then I'm going to stop the recording and end the meeting. And appreciate it. Talk to you later.